does take a while. I've forgotten that. Um, so anyway, I, I can uh, uh, summarize what we're going to do next, which we will, at the end of this, we'll have a complete geometry, which so we'll have all of our volumes defined, we'll have all of the boundaries that we're going to need uh, defined, and then uh, we're going to mesh it up. And as I mentioned before, we're gonna do it in a very simple way today, just uniform resolution, which is the easiest way. Um, and um, then we're, once you, good, it finished. Then once we do that, then we'll look at the boundary conditions as well. So, okay. If we were just doing this um, not step by step, we would have played the whole thing from this top level file. But this is what we just did. We just did everything in the geometry uh, journal file. But now we're going to mesh it up. And so to do that, we're going to, uh, you have to tell it what scheme. So we're gonna use a tet mesh. So we're gonna tell it the scheme. We're gonna give it a size. Oh, you'll notice here that um, you can use units within Trellis. So we're using a uh, 25 kilometer size. The reason we can do that is because at the very beginning, we, um, told it uh, that we're gonna use uh, SI units. So anyway, so we'll, we'll do the um, meshing scheme. Oh, yes. If you don't specify a unit, just give it a number, what would it call? Uh, well, to whatever you think you're using, because it, it doesn't know about units until you tell it. Um, it's, so if you just give it the number 25, it's just 25, but if you specify a size, yeah. it's a coordinate. Yeah. It's whatever coordinate system. Give it, it only knows a Cartesian coordinate. So whatever scale a value of one means in terms of everything you've done, but it's not the specified a size. Oh, yeah, that would, that's true, because that's the base units. Yeah, you're right. So, yeah. Um, so we do this, We're, this won't do anything other than set our scheme and our uh, command. That's, this is actually where it meshes things up. So now we've told it we want tetrahedrals, uh, elements, we want 25 kilometers uniform resolution, so it takes a little while. And the way that Trellis operates, it'll first put triangles on all of the surfaces, and then after it does that, it'll, it'll build a volume mesh from that. Did I tell it to do it? Yeah, I did. How does Pilot know which domain is slab and which domain is slab? Uh, we're, we're going to mark that, uh, and I'll go through, that's in the boundary conditions part, but I can summarize right now. Each of these is a separate volume. Uh, you can't see right now, but there's a list of the different volumes. And so each of those volumes, uh, we will assign to a block, and a block is output as a unit to the output file, and you can give that block a name. We'll call one of them crust, we'll call one of them mantle, they have a name and they have an ID number. So, yeah. 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 So that's, though you give names to the node sets, they'll also have an ID number, but we actually use the names in Pilot. Okay, so that, oh, no, it's just making progress. Um, I'm trying to think what else I can talk about while this is going. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
there is a GUI. Um, which kind of helps, you know, if you're not, don't know what it can. Yeah. If you generate something with a GUI, can you export the GUI on Yes. Because as you do this, um, Trellis automatically creates journal files. So that it, uh, where it saves them is machine dependent. I think you can control that in your preferences. But if I look into this um, directory right here, you'll see, let's see. Yep, there's a qubit04 journal. So it's saved all the commands that I did. And even if you use the GUI, it will, it will translate that into. Okay. Okay, so there we go. That's, um, that's our mesh and it's actually easier to see now, I think, like this. Um, but this is basically the picture I showed in, in the, um, the preview. Um, so we're not done. We have our mesh, but now we have to do our boundary. Oh, the other thing I should look at before I get to that, there are these nice tools over here. We want to uh, check out the quality of our mesh. So you can do that by you select mesh, then we're gonna look at the volume mesh. This little badge thing means you're looking at the quality. We'll tell it to look at all of the volumes. And the metric that we usually like is condition number. And let's see, I think we want it to print a text. I don't know. They've changed the way it works, so we'll see what it does with this. Okay, so here what we've done uh, is look at the element quality. And you can see this is okay, but not great. And you can see there's some poor quality elements. Uh, what ideally you would like them all to be one, but that never happens. Two is, is good quality. If it's two and below, that's pretty good quality. If you start getting a lot above that, that is uh, less than ideal and it means that you're likely to have convergence issues. You can also see which ones are the, um, the problem ones. Uh, let's, let's see, um, we'll just uh, upper limit of five, lower limit of two. Okay, so those are our problem ones, and it's, uh, it's really the elements where it has trouble where fault surfaces come together. I'm, uh, I don't think I'm going to do it today, but there are a lot of tools within uh, Trellis for improving the quality of your mesh. Um, there's, um, I'm trying to think. We do, it's mentioned in a lot of our examples, so it's probably best to look at those. If we end up with spare time later on, I may look at that. But let's see, how are we doing? I have half an hour. Well, let's see, should I do? Uh, 